Let's explore some of the advanced features for the timer in the Canon mode. Hi YouTube. Let's dive in by heading over to the script properties. We can get there by navigating over to the menu items under tools and then the scripts menu item. In this video, we are working with version 5.1 of the advanced timer script. If you are using version 5.1 or later, the property should look similar. We will be working with the count up mode and exploring the advanced features available. To expand the properties, we need to change the layout from basic to advanced. Then we will need to reveal the timer settings by changing the property from hidden to expanded. Once we make the selection, we will notice that new properties become available to configure. Before I started this video, I restored the script to its default values. Therefore, we need to start by assigning a text source for the timer display. Once we made the selection, further properties will become available to configure. The next property we need to explore is the timer format property. This is the property that will configure the physical display and to some extent the behavior of the timer that is visible in the final output, also known as the program output. There are five options available under timer format. And we can think about the first four options as presets of possible configurations for that of the fifth option, which is the custom time format. If the custom time format option is selected, we will notice that a new text input property becomes available. In order to understand the first four properties more clearly, let's first explore the custom time format. A standard time format will include hours, minutes, seconds, and split seconds. The timestamp is represented by special character combinations as follow. Hour units are represented by a dollar sign followed by capital H. Minute units are represented by a dollar sign followed by capital M. Second units are represented by a dollar sign followed by capital S. Split second units are represented by a dollar sign followed by capital F. A truncate function is represented by a dollar sign followed by capital T. If the dollar sign T is defined, then all the leading zeros will be removed from the timestamp. So if we revisit the timer format options, we can consider the first four options as a preset of a custom format. These were included to make common configurations easily selectable for basic usage. Let's demonstrate by putting this in context. Here we can see the first option, display full format, which is also the default setting. And with this setting selected, it will include a timestamp that shows the hours, minutes, seconds, and split seconds. The second option will include a timestamp that shows the hours, minutes, seconds, and split seconds, but any leading zeros will be removed. The third option will show only the hours, minutes, and seconds, and it will not include the split seconds and any leading zeros will be removed. The fourth option will show only hours, minutes, and seconds, so the split seconds is not visible in this mode. There is also a hidden feature that is only available in the custom time format, and this is the ability to manipulate the length of the minute unit. The minute unit, as a standard, contains 60 minutes. However, this can be increased or decreased by including a special character combination containing a capital letter M followed by the desired unit length and placed inside of curly brackets. Changing the minute unit will not impact the normal function of the hours or days units. Now it is important to mention that if this function is used and the minute unit is altered and is no longer 60 minutes, then it will have an impact on the display of the timer. It will make it all look a little bit more wonky. But it is important to know that the actual time sequence will stay intact. In other words, two hours will still remain two hours, but it may not display in that way on screen. 
this feature was introduced to facilitate or accommodate those who wants to use a timer for things like soccer matches that require a 90 minute frame. We can demonstrate this feature more clearly once we explore another cool feature, which is the ability to set the timer manually. Let's demonstrate the adjust timer manually feature. You can find the checkbox at the lower end at the bottom of the properties panel. And if you check it, you will notice that there is a new group settings that becomes available. Included is for the hours, minutes, seconds and split seconds. There's also a checkbox at the bottom. And if you check this option, then when your timer stops, it will save that time. If you close OBS and opens it up again, it will load from the last saved time. This saves you from having to configure this manually. Now to get back to what we were discussing earlier about extending the minutes from 60 seconds upwards, I'm going to demonstrate it using the set timer manually function. So let's go back and set the timer format to custom time format to enable access to that feature. And you will notice that after find the open bracket M90 close bracket in the formula here for the time format. Now we are going to set the minutes manually and I'm just put here 59 minutes and 59 seconds. And you'll notice the minute I press the set button, it will load it into the display. And there we go. Now, if I start the timer, normally when it gets to 59 minutes and 59 seconds, it will go to one hour. In this case, because we defined this custom setting, it's now going to go from 59 minutes and 59 seconds to one hour and 60 minutes. Let's demonstrate. And there you can see, we're still over an hour, but it's now going to count up from 60 minutes up all the way to 89 minutes. And we can demonstrate it here as well by changing the minutes to 89. If I set it, it will load it into the timer. And now if I start timer, it will go to zero. The reason why it's showing one hour and zero zero is because in this mode, the timer doesn't really work normally as you would expect. So basically what's going to happen is when this timer gets up to a additional 30 minutes, then it will go over to two hours because remember, 90 minutes is an hour and a half. If any part of this is still confusing, please shout out in the comments and I will try and explain it further in more detail. Let's go over the last remaining items for this video. I'm going to uncheck set timer manually because we're not going to use this any further in this video. And I'm going to change the custom time format to the default display full format. The next feature I want to demonstrate to you is the timer manipulation feature. Now, if you look under, there are three settings. One is hidden, expanded and disabled. If you define hidden, then the feature is available, but it will be hidden on a properties panel. And that is just to make sure that this is not overcrowded. If we select it to expand it, we will notice that there are two new groups that become available. Both groups are identical. The only difference that one group adds and the other subtracts. And this feature was mainly implemented for user interactivity on platforms, for example, Twitch, where if your time is running, let's say you've got a minute to complete a certain task, then your users can use channel points to either penalize or reward you by adding or subtracting time to this timer. 
And the way we use that is you have three sets available in each group and you can make each set with a very specific value. So if set one is triggered in this case, it will add five seconds. Set two will add 15 seconds and set three will add 30 seconds to the time. If they trigger the subtract sets, then it will do the opposite. You can defy a limit amount here. And what this will do is it will limit the amount of times that these sets can be triggered. So if you want to limit it to only like three calls or four calls, whatever the case might be, then you define it here. You can obviously remove this with a hotkey as well. All of these settings have a corresponding hotkey. The limit node here is a text source that you can define to show a message when that limit was reached. So let's say it was activated two times and it's being activated a third time. And then a text source will become available to notify that this was reached. And again, this is just a useful feature to communicate to the viewers. If you are looking to configure the shortcuts for this, you will find them under the shortcuts. Let's go and have a look at that. I'm going to close out of this form and then I'm going to head over to File, Settings and Hotkeys. And you will find the hotkeys under the script name, which will be stopwatch in this case. And there you can see where you can define the hotkeys for group one and group two for set one, two, and three. Let's close out of this. The final feature I want to demonstrate to you is the stopwatch lap or split feature. And this feature allows you to display a text source with some split or lap data. In order to activate a feature, you need to define a split source. You can do so by selecting a text type source for the split source. And when you select it, new properties will become available. The properties that have become available will be the split button and the split type. The four options available is interval, mark, mark interval, and interval mark. Interval will be the timestamp between activations. Mark will be the timestamp at the activation. And these two are just a mix of the two. Let me demonstrate mark interval. With that being selected, I'm going to start the timer. And if I hit split time, the button, then you will notice that it produces some information there. You can see that there are three columns. Column one shows you the serial, one, two, and three. Column two here will show the mark, that is the time at which the button was pressed. And the second column, the interval between the button presses. That brings us to the end of this video. If you have any questions or need support with the script, you're welcome to reach out in the forums. I will leave a link in the description below. If you found this video useful, please consider to subscribe to the channel. It is free and it will help to grow the community. I would love to hear from you, so come say hi in the comments. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.